Hey folks, welcome to Maverick Gunworks. Uh, this, on this uh, video, I'm going to talk a little bit about threading on a rifle barrel. I have a customer with a 22 caliber long rifle, caliber uh, Savage Model 64, so it's just a small 22 semi-automatic. He wants to put a uh, flash hider on it, so we're going to, we're going to thread it to a half 28 thread. And uh, I've, had already, I've, stri I've already stripped the, the barrel out of the gun. I had to take off the extractor, the uh, or the ejector rather, the both sight, front and rear sight, uh, take the barrel out of the gun to get it into the lathe. And we've taped the whole barrel has tape over it, have some have some brass shim. I'll show you in just a second uh, around the barrel so we don't scar anything. And what I've done now is I've gone ahead and set up my dial indicator. We're going to dial in uh, from the inside uh, the rifling. You have to understand that uh, you can't just put to, to thread a, a barrel accurately for a suppressor or, or muzzle device. Uh, you can't use a three jaw chuck and just put it in there automatically and assume it's going to be in the center because there rarely are. Um, what I'm doing now is we have it in a four jaw chuck, which uh, each jaw is independent from each other, so we can uh, turn one and loosen another one and, and bring the barrel exactly to center. All right. So, what I'm going to do, I'll give you, or you can bring the camera up here a little bit, I'll show you a little bit closer shot. Of what I'm doing. Maybe this will work out. I can see. Oh, you see, I've got my, my dial indicator here set up. And um, in here you can see a brass, little brass shim in the uh, in the jaws or around the barrel. Actually, I've got a tape to the barrel so we don't damage the, the barrel at all. And then my dial indicator, the tip of it is on the inside of the rifling. And as you can see, I'm going to spin it by hand just a little bit so you can see the dial is turning. And then it's going to take considerable time typically to dial this in. I've, I've done a lot of work on it previously to get it closer than what it would have been. But you've got to realize the uh, indicator I'm using is each mark on it is five ten thousandths of an inch, which is half of a ten thousandths. Um, very close. And I want to dial this in to within. Uh, half ten thousandths or one ten thousandths if the best I can anyways uh, so that we are dead center of the rifling um, when we start cutting it outside of the diameter of the barrel <clears throat> and I'll show you when we cut the outside diameter that you can see the uh, and you can see a little bit I'm, I'm off there's I'm off about yeah, three or four thousandths anyways um, anyway I'm gonna dial this in a little closer and we'll come back and show it to you and then uh, get a better feel for exactly what we're doing here. All right, so give me, give me a little while. It's gonna take some time to dial this in, but I'll get it closer uh, so we can go ahead and start cutting the outside. And once it's dialed in, we'll see just how far off the outside is compared to the inside of the, of the rifling. All right, got it dialed in pretty close now. We'll get the uh, camera up here a little closer and give you a bird's eye view, I guess. If, what we're talking about. All right, so watch my bell indicator. We're looking at the inside of the rifling. And right now we're our dial is on 14. And as I turn it, you see the needle is bouncing between the, the lands and the grooves on the rifling. And it's moving 14, 14 and a quarter, tops out 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half, there's 14. 14, 14, about 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half, somewhere in there. So that is exactly what I'm looking for. All right. So now I have uh, my independently adjustable four jaw chuck there. We have our, let me get the camera back up here. Yeah. So now we've got all of our our dialing in done, everything's tight. Uh, I'm within about five ten thousandths of being dead center on the rifling in our lathe. And we're going to uh, remove our dial indicator. We'll get it out of the way, and we're going to start. Uh, and we'll start cutting the outside of the barrel down, so we can thread it to a half twenty eight. And first, we need to measure the outside of the barrel, see how far we have to go. There. 
I had to go grab my calipers. I left them over on the bench there behind us. So anyway, all right, get it. Set the caliper back to zero here. And let's see what we have. Diameter wise. All right, I'm at uh, 580 thousandths. So we're gonna have to take off 80 thousandths on the diameter of the barrel. So we'll get a, a start on that and show you just how much the outside is gonna be not true with the inside of the barrel. So we'll get started on that a little bit here. Let's go with put our gearing on high, high gear and move my, yep, I've got my machine set up pretty much where it needs to be, I believe. All right, here we go. I almost forgot something. I'm going to set my digital readout so that I know exactly. We'll go back to zero here so I know exactly how far I've gone from the end of the barrel. I want to cut um, 500 thousandths deep because, in this case, we're only going to go enough to get our device on there and leave enough material that the front sight can still be used. So, about a half inch is as far as I can go. Okay, so now we've gotten a half inch started the threading here. I'll give you a better idea what that looks like. You can see as I rotate the the uh, head of the lathe here, it only took off, I don't know, what is that, five thousandths or so, but you can see where we did not touch the end of the barrel here, and there's on the opposite side of it, we're cutting a lot more material. So that tells us that, uh, again, the rifling is not exactly centered with the outside of the diameter of the barrel. So with that, I'm going to continue to cut this. We'll uh, cut it on down to where it'll be, make it usable for our half inch uh, 28 thread. I'm going to get this cut down, get it smoothed out, and we'll come back and show you uh, the, the start, start the threading process on it. Okay. Okay, we've now finished uh, cutting the outside of the barrel to 500 thousandths, and I've changed my tooling bit to a cutoff bit, which will give us a relief cut. We'll show you that after we get a cut, but that's what I'm doing here is a relief cut. We have a just a narrow blade here to give us a cut, so that we when we are threading our threading bit will not get pinched on the back of the shoulder here so we're going to do a relief cut and when i get the uh i'll get my threading bit set up and i'll show you what the relief cut's doing for us okay so i said i would show you why we cut a relief cut in here and if you'll see the get my little pointer here my screwdriver you look at the where the lathe bit is. This is our our threading bit. All right, right at the pointer here. And maybe I can make it zoom in. Let's see. I'm not a professional camera operator here, so y'all kind of bear with me. Our lathe bit, as, it, as we're cutting the threads on the uh, part that we turn down, as the bit gets toward the back, you need to have a little bit of a relief cut so that you have a little a space to be able to stop the lathe for one thing and not damage your uh, the back of your barrel where you've cut right here and also 
a not to have the the cutting tool to uh, get broken for the tip of it to be broken off trying to get it out of the way in time lathe is going to be running as slow as I can turn it um, however you have to be really careful about letting it go too far and uh, damaging the, the shoulder on the barrel back here so anyway we're going to start threading that and I'll stop a, uh, in a little bit and give you an idea of what it's going to look like during that process okay guys so I'm going to have a have a camera operator here <laughs> he's going to try to try to film it uh, with me <clears throat> with me showing you how we're threading here so I have to have control of the machine um, we're going to be cutting only a couple thousands at a time and maybe you can see give an idea of what what's going on here it takes considerable time uh, only cutting one or two thousands at a time to get the thread as deep as it needs to be so uh, here we go I'll get it back working where it needs to be to start cutting again <laughs> We have to keep plenty of cutting oil on it, so we can make sure that we're, we're good there and not have ragged threads on it. Here we go. And if I hit the dials just right, it will cut exactly the same spot every time. You really have to be patient. So right there, we've got to make sure we stop it when we get to our relief cut. Okay, we'll see where my dial is now. Back that out. Get back here. Turn it back into our start point again. Right. We'll add a couple of thousands to it. Let's clean this off. You can see the, see the, thread, the thread starting to starting to show up. And then we engage the gearbox. And then we go again. Watch carefully as the tip gets to the relief point. Stop. Back it out. And we'll go again. We'll keep doing this until we get the thread deep enough to get our device on. Which in this case will be somewhere around 25,000 deep, I believe, is what we're looking for. Alright. So, anyway, I'm going to continue this process. And uh, we'll come back and show you the end result. Cut it cut almost exactly where it needed to be with the threading dial on the lathe. Give us a really good starting point. But I'm going to speed this process up a little bit. I like to use the, the lathe to get everything almost complete. But I'm going to do a little bit of a cheating on here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a half 28 die and a handle. We're going to turn it by hand. To finish it off, it gives me a really good clean cut and saves us a, a little bit of effort too. I'll be able to just make sure that we have it exactly engaged with our existing threads. Okay, got it true. And if everything goes well, it should go on actually go on fairly easily. All we're doing is cleaning up a little bit of rough edges rather than having to take as much time with the, the lathe bit. And with the lathe bit, we know we've got everything exactly true and, and square where I want it to be. And with this die, that uh, lathe bit pre-cut gives it a lot easier to, uh, you know, to spin on. And we're gonna take and just turn it with a hand right there and get it finished off the edges of it. Right, Metal shape. As you can see, we got, they cut a good bit still that was left to be removed to make it a, a cleaner thread. We're taking several more passes with the lathe. Now we're going to clean it off. And I just happen to have the muzzle device that this will be used on this gun. So let's see if it screws on here. And here we go. All right. <laughs> Look at that. I got it screws on like it's supposed to. And it bottoms out just where it's supposed to be. All right. So now, now we'll take this off. We're going to get it out of the, I'm going to leave that on there to protect the threads while we're taking it out of the, out of the, uh, uh, out of the lathe 
chuck. Um, so anyway, we're going to continue with this process and we'll take it out. Um, I tell you what, if I hang on just a second, just uh, give me just a second. We're going to take this out and I'll show you that we've had it, had the barrel taped up so we didn't uh, have a chance of, of scratching the barrel at all. And I'll take it in and out of the machine. And I'll show you, give you a little trick of how we, uh, how we do that too. As to keep it protected. You can see each jaw is, is adjustable individually. Right. And our muzzle device there will also help protect it. I'm going to back the lathe up here just a little bit. And what I do also is, camera stand out of the way, I've got to take loose the, the uh, spider gear on the, I guess on the gear, but it's a spider, we call it a spider, on the back of the lathe or the barrel. Normally, if it's a longer barrel, to come out come out the back end here and be easier to, to deal with, but this short barrel I had to improvise and use, uh, just turn down the dowel rod to help us keep the back of the barrel somewhat centered also, so we'll just be wobbling over the place and keep it in the center. And now, my little cheater again, I'm gonna take another dowel rod that will fit inside the rifle barrel. And we're gonna put it in the barrel here to help support it so I can hold it up while I'm taking the barrel out of the out of the lathe. We open this end up or we don't damage or scratch the barrel coming out. <clears throat> Alright now we can now we're holding the barrel on both ends and gently remove it so that we have it supported all the way. Alright. And keep it centered there. And there we go. How about that? All right. We take a dial out here. And there's a brass shim stock to keep from getting anything scratched. Now we're going to take, I'll take a little tape off of it and put the gun back together. And we'll show you the finished product here in a little bit. All right, I told you we would uh, come and show you a little bit more detail about what we've done with the barrel, how we had to. Uh, take it apart out of the gun to get uh, get it into the lathe to be able to thread it. So just to show you a few parts, we'll snip the camera up here a little closer. We have our, let's see. All right, we had to take off the, you know, the rear sight and the elevator for it. This is the um, ejector that we'll have to put back in the barrel. This nut holds the barrel onto the receiver. So we had to take it out of the receiver and then our front sight, all right? Some of the parts we had to, had to take about take apart to be able to get into the lathe. So I'm gonna put this stuff back together and I'll uh, show you what it looks like when we're finished with it. There's a, our uh, the gun will be complete here shortly, hopefully, well, everything goes back together like it should. And we'll also have to uh, do some timing on our flash hider or muzzle brake, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll have to put some shims up back here, I believe, to be able to get it in the right position so that the uh, the bottom is is uh, where it should be located. So you have your gas ports at the top of it. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So we'll come back in a little bit and, and uh, get it completed. Okay, folks, here we go. We've got it all put back together now. And here is your threaded flash hider. Right, we've reinstalled our front sight, our rear sight. Got the barrel back in, in the gun. You ready to go home? Maybe that gives you some idea of uh, part of the process, at least, on what is required to, to thread a barrel similar to this. It all depends on individual guns as to how much difficulty it is to take the gun apart. And, and uh, sometimes we can get the receiver into the lathe without having to take it out. In this case, we couldn't do it. So, uh, that being said, well, thanks for watching us, and uh, let me know if we can help you with something in Backward Gun Works. <laughs>